What's up, folks? Uh, Matt and Ryan here with the DFS 5-Pack. Hopefully everybody enjoyed the football game last night because the basketball games, it's a really boring night of basketball. Like, nothing really to, like, for just from a fan perspective to watch and enjoy. So hopefully a bunch of guys won ugly on NBA, Matt. I know you did. Uh, it was definitely a night to attack the mid-tier and go a little bit different. It was going to work out better because uh, the stars were not great. And Bede was in foul trouble. Trey Young was not good. Giannis was okay, but only played like 20 minutes again. So uh, if any of y'all hit the mid-tier last night, hopefully you guys won some nice money. Yes, I did hit the mid-tier, but unfortunately I did not cash in my bigger money contest, which always sucks. And Dennis Smith and Kevin Knox were awful for me. And just shows you how hard it is. You talk about that all the time. I used Jaron Jackson, who is amazing. But because of Knox and Dennis Smith, you know, I, you know, really hurt me. So on to the night. All right, guys. So, again, we'll do our daily little tip at about OverlayDFS.com, guys. Uh, it's hard to win GPPs on DK, as you just discussed. It is easier to get about nine times your buying back on NBA or NFL over on Overlay. I didn't do anything special last night. Eight and four, snuck into the money. That's $180 winnings off of a $22 bet. Uh, I think the fun part, though, goes if you scroll down a little bit further and what could have been. Um if this had been the other way around or, you know, whatever way you look at it, these close matchups, I liked Burks over Conley. Burks lost a lot of run in the fourth quarter. His Golden State was awful. Um, he also wasn't very good himself, so it was a real close matchup. Uh, but there's a lot of fun ones up there. Uh, a lot of these tight matchups can be the big difference on the way things go. Holmes, you know, really coming through in the fourth quarter to beat Tobias Harris. There's a nice sweat to enjoy in this game. And again, uh, you're not going to win every night like anything, but it is a winnable type of game. So give it a whirl. I see a lot of you guys are playing. Uh, we'll continue to talk about them every day, but it's definitely fun. And after you get a couple wins under your belt, it gets more fun. Wouldn't you agree with that part? No doubt about it. So, all right, guys, we are here to talk DK, though. Uh, hopefully we get some more fun basketball games tonight because it's just, you know, luckily we had that good football game that was entertaining us as fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to reiterate, we said we'd keep it going through Tuesday. It is the last day available for the Cyber Monday and Black Friday deals. Uh, this is done after today. Uh, welcome aboard to the new lifetime customers. 300 instead of 400. Annual 150 instead of 200. MLB 65 instead of 99. Pay through the website. Get your reimbursement in 24 hours or less. Realistically, probably more like 24 minutes. That being said, let's move into our DK picks for the day. So uh, Occam's Razor play of the day. Um, Luka Doncic, 11-3, more than fairly priced. If you look through what Luka has done this year, I mean, one, it's been incredible. Uh, but a big thing is in harder matchups against teams like the Clippers, you know, when he played the Orlando Magic early in the year when they were at full strength, uh, Denver Nuggets, his scores aren't great. When he gets an easier matchup, he has 70-plus in every game I could find this year that was at least semi-competitive. Uh, to go for 70-plus DK points. He gets a good spot today against the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, you can play him at the small forward position, which is kind of nice. He seems like he's in a good spot for classic Luka, which this year appears to be 70-plus. Every time it's a pretty good spot to be. New Orleans is a good pace team. They play less than stellar team defense. Uh, very easy just to lock him in your cash lineups today. Yeah, you have to play him in cash games. It's definitely a risk at your own, a fate at your own risk in tournaments. He's priced down from what he was last game in a much easier matchup. It just makes no sense, right? Right. Like, I kind of just expect him to drop out of bed and give us 70 DK points today, which is what he kind of seems to do, unless he's going up against a real good team that can make his life difficult, which is not New Orleans. So uh, I struggle not to use him in cash lineups. And I might, you know, if I'm only playing three lineups or one lineup, he definitely makes my one. If I'm playing three, he probably makes at least two or three. I get that. All right, next up, you want to roll over to Evan Fournier. This is another one. Um, price seems low based on currently where we're at right now. Yeah, I mean, first off, like, there is, you know, intrigue in the Dallas-New Orleans game for sure, but this is my favorite game of the night, especially from the Orlando side. I mean, can't get difference in, you know, the biggest pace up spot you can get from Orlando to Washington. Washington plays no defense. Fournier, I'm not a Fournier guy, as you know. I hardly ever use him, but he's playing really well right now. Um, I don't know if I've ever brought him up on a public video, so there's a first for everything. He's crushing value right now. He's got you know between 35 and 41 DK points in three straight. He's got cash to GP value to GPP value in nine of eleven. The matchup couldn't be better. I mean, I expect 30. I'd be I'd take the over easily on 30 plus in this spot. And that's cash game value walking into it for him. I like 40 here in this spot. Um, I'm all about it. What's your take? I just think it's kind of an easy play to make, 
right? I was actually impressed that you went to just such a simple play today and didn't try to get too cute. It was just an obvious play to me. Like, Evan Fournier's role on this team right now with no Vucevic is just different. Their best offensive player, by a pretty good margin in my eyes, is gone. That means that Evan Fournier is now their best offensive player. He gets a very easy path to success today, uh, going up against the Washington Wizards, which is a crush spot of all crush spots. He just crushed them with Vucevic about two and a half weeks ago. What would lead me to believe that he wouldn't come out and just do his thing tonight? Uh, in the two good matchups he's had with no Vucevic, he's taken 20-plus shots each of those times. Uh, I expect him to have a really nice game today. And if you ask me about the over-under on 35, I wouldn't even have to think about it. It would be over. Not saying that it's going to happen, but where my money would go, the bet that I would make it would be easily 35-plus. Same. And this is another one. We've talked about this. Teams against Washington like don't get as much love. And the great thing about Washington is you only need to run it back if you ha- want to run it back with one guy who we'll bring up shortly. All right, next up. So you mentioned that the Dallas guys are in a good spot, and they are. And I'm also with you. I like a lot of guys from that Orlando Magic game as well, uh, or Wizards versus Magic game as well. Another guy that I'll probably run it with on Dallas is going to be Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, Very much like Evan Fournier, a much different spot than he was in just a week and a half ago. A week and a half ago, Hardaway was struggling to get 20 minutes a game. Now he's been inserted into the starting lineup. He's played 29 to 38 minutes over the past four. He appears to be getting real buy-in from his head coach, which is a big thing, because we know Hardaway is a decent player. Uh, Is he better than Luka or Porzingis? Oh, God, no, not even close, right? But he's the third best player on this team now and the third scoring option in a good spot today against New Orleans. He has absolutely obliterated his price in two of the past four games. I'm talking an 8x and a 10.5x type of game. That is major GPP value. You can run him at the two or the three today, which are both positions we like to punt at. Now, two of the guys that we like today happen to run in those positions, but I still like the ability to punt right there. Uh, He's got big upside in this spot against New Orleans. And when the three ball is falling, I mean, don't be surprised if this guy's seven or eight X's today easily. Uh, He's in a good spot to succeed because every team is going to go try to stop Luka. Now, they're not having a lot of success doing that. It doesn't mean that their defensive mantra isn't trying to stop Luka Doncic, which gives Hardaway open three-point shots. For sure. Um, Again, this is another one. It is a lot like Fournier. Just crushing value right now in spots like this. I'm a Hardaway fan, as you know. Seems, again, another one that's priced too cheap. Um, He's in a great spot tonight, no doubt about it. All right, let's move over to your last play. Bradley, the real Beal deal. Price is down, which is, you know, really nice when you can get Beal at a discount. It's harder for him to hit upside sometimes when they price him close to 10K because, duh, why wouldn't it be harder if your (laughs) price is going to be a little bit higher? Uh, And also, his floor every once in a while is a little bit lower because of the blowouts that the Wizards get into. I don't picture them getting blown out tonight. And again, the Magic aren't like a quote-unquote crush spot, but he did just crush them about 17 days ago. So he's not a guy that like racks up a ton of, you know, steals, blocks, or even assists or rebounds usually. He's a he's a scorer. So when he's priced close to 10K, I'll still like him. But like you said, he is a guy who's just, it's harder for him to reach like, you know, upside of other guys that are over 10K. That being said, why wouldn't it be, as you mentioned, he's, Cheap today, like thousand dollars cheaper than he was last game. I'm a huge Beal fan, as you know. I remember these two teams played a couple weeks ago on a Sunday. I went hard on this game, worked out for me really well. See no reason not to go right back here, um, especially in Washington. I mentioned with Fournier that I love the Orlando pieces here, and you can go four deep as far as I'm concerned. There, I want Washington exposure if I do that, and Beal's the guy I want, no doubt about that. He just went off on this team, you know, had a really bad first half. This was the game where I think he had like four points in the first half. And No, different game, excuse me. He went off in the second half. They were down 17 in this game in the fourth quarter. Single-handedly put the team on his back. He's too cheap for me here. He's, this is one where if he were like 9,300, I would still have interest in him here because I love him. So at 8,600, I like him a lot. This isn't one where, oh, just because of the price, you know? Well, it doesn't hurt that the price is down. So the Magic are the lowest number of possessions per game team in the NBA. However, with the game in Washington and with no Vucevic, who's an excellent half-court player, but not much of a, you know, run up and down the court type of guy, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Magic uh, maybe allow the Wizards to dictate pace just a little bit more, which would clearly be good for Beal because when the Wizards run, 
they want to run. They know they can't play defense for 24 seconds, so they want to get into an up and down, up and down the court battle. And maybe with no Vucevic there to be more of a half court team, the Magic allow the Wizards yeah. to dictate this pace a little bit, which would be great for Beal and obviously great for all the Magic guys as well. Again, the Magic are also one of the better defensive teams in the association, so you don't typically want to go after them. But you don't mind going after them in the right spot, specifically with a guy like a Bradley Beal. You know, Bradley Beal is a guy that can succeed in you know up pace team or up pace games and down pace games because he's still a pretty good half court player. Uh, and also, he's always got a clear path to why he can be successful because he is so by far the best player yes. on his team that he needs to have the ball in his hands. If the Wizards are playing well, it's almost always because of him. I actually do. I love your point about like you know. Con- uh, controlling pace because I think this is a great spot for Washington to control the pace because I think Orlando can beat Washington no matter what. And a team like Orlando, especially without Vucevic, they like games like this because they have guys that like to play fast. They just don't play fast all the time. So, you know, they're not going to try to play as fast as Washington, but they have guys that are good in the, in the, in a full court game. And I'm sure they're excited to play that way. So I like this game a lot. Yeah. And I like the fact that it's in Washington. I always prefer, the home team to have a better opportunity to dictate pace on the road team. doesn't always work out that way, but I, it's a preference. And the last point is there's no end of a back-to-back here with Beal. Like, I'm always more worried about a bad basketball team with a star like Bradley Beal if there's a game tomorrow, especially if it's a winnable game tomorrow, or if he just played yeah. 40 minutes last night. Because this guy plays as many minutes as anybody in the league, but he's still a human being. And human beings are more likely to get tired if they played the day before, which he did not. No, he didn't. So the only thing I don't love about this game is that it's Washington's first game back from a road trip, but they just got embarrassed on this road trip. And this is a winnable game for them. Orlando is better than them, but this is a winnable game for Washington. Yeah. And again, like, don't you think they're happy as hell to get home and play a team that's not good? They probably are. Um, Yeah, they probably are. That has nothing to do with the first game back from a road trip. That's a different story, but I'm sure they are. Yeah, I'm sure they're happy not to have to face LeBron or Kawhi today. So um, probably a good spot for them to go out and play well. This is a very winnable game for Washington, who is not going to win a ton of games this year. Exactly. All right, guys. Good luck today. Go win that money. Go check out OverlayDFS.com. The link for drafters is below as well. And we cannot reiterate enough times that if you use our link to sign up for drafters, you get a 100% deposit match instead of 50, and you get that money right away. I am excited to do another drafters today.